and this is Nemesis Insider. Insider? I barely know her. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh He's God. at it again. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nemesis What's Insider. Up, everybody? Welcome to Nemesis What's Insider. Up, everybody? Oh, that was an echo. I already did good right off the bat. Um, I'm your host, James Autumn, and Nemesis Insider is the show about interviewing your favorite creators from Team Nemesis. And we actually are down uh, one host tonight, so it's just me. You're going to have to look at me, and then you're going to have to look at this awesome guy to my side here who is a new addition to nemesis and we are very happy to have him here we have the country welcome hi thanks for having now, me now is that the or the like i feel like Either the extra one. e means more like a lengthier pronunciation no i just wanted i had to have country and i couldn't just have country so i just had to cut i kept trying it over and over and we ended up with the country so. okay Okay. Eventually, I'm going to ask Twitch just to give me country because I think it's a one follower account right now that's not active. So, wait, you can someday. do that? Yeah, you can email them and maybe they'll give it to you. Sometimes I do. Legit, I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't. I'm not big enough right now to do it. So, oh, so you have to have some clout maybe to to yeah. get that yeah, kind yeah. of <laughs> pull. Yeah. <laughs> do they do that on purpose? Like intentionally take up like single names and you know obvious words that that we like and then. I don't we think have to so. ask them. <laughs> I think it's just because, you know, Twitch has been out since, what, you know, 10 years probably now. Yeah, just about. And someone's going to take everything. Yeah, I come from the uh, Justin TV days to Twitch, so it was a culture shock. I don't know if you were familiar with the platform beforehand, but it's more like what Twitch is today. Because gaming had a spot on JTV, but it ended up kind of in the background to the IRL people, to the people who were doing creative. And of course they had a they had a tendency to let people, you know, share movies and TV series on there, which became a highly illegal through the years. <laughs> so, you know, th those channels where they had twenty four seven latest movies, you know, just on rotation, those were gone. But uh JTV, which was named after Justin, the guy who sold it to Twitch, uh he uh, he brought up a lot of IRL people like I Justine. She was a huge name that came straight from that to YouTube. She had her audience there and then went over to YouTube pretty successfully and painlessly. So like then it became Twitch and everybody who was used to that culture was so so caught up in what's gaming? Why does ga why is gaming here? We're more interested in talking to people, you know, and interacting. Gaming is weird. We don't like this change. And then, you know, it flip flops now. It's like Twitch is all about gaming. <laughs> but how long have you been on Twitch? Oh, as a streamer? Mm hmm. Um, I started, so, oh God, what year is it? 2022. So the beginning of 2021, uh, late 2020, I did a couple of December streams that year. Um, and then I, I really picked the schedule, started in, in January, I think it was January 3rd, right after I got home from Christmas break. I'm like, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's see what we can do. And really I started because I was competitive and my friends were streaming and I'm like, I, I, I bet I can do better than them. <laughs> I, I, I am a very competitive person. So when I saw that they're out there, I'm like, you know what? If they can do it. Let, let's try it. Let's see what can happen. Let's, let's screw around a little bit. Have some fun. Well, that's awesome. Um, so you said you're very competitive. Did you and your friends have a specific game that caused you to want to stream it and then kind of compete with them on that? Or No, they're both Warzone streamers. So oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't go there. So I just did Val I did League of Legends a lot back in, okay. back in those days. What are you gaming on now? What, what do you play? Um, so right now, uh, doing a lot of Final Fantasy IX. That's, that's been the big one for the last probably month and a half. A little bit of Cuphead. Um, and then... Every every Saturday we do a horror night. So we've done Outlast. We're doing what's the game we're doing now? It's a horror game. <laughs> <laughs> I have it up. Uh, Visage. We're, we're doing oh Visage. yeah, that's gonna be so good. And when are you doing that again? Uh, every Saturday. So we'll be doing it. We'll continue with the Saturday. Okay. Okay. Cool. So are 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 you a person who likes to just run for two or three hours and call it quits, or do you commit when you get into it? I am a three hour 
maybe you know if it, it's a good day we'll we'll, we'll peak at four but <laughs> i'm exhausted after a stream i i can't i can't do seven hours every stream yeah that's a that is a, a tough thing to do and you shouldn't do that every night so it's it's good to have some sort of balance what's up to chard monk in this in the chat hope you are doing well have our boy the country here oh visage is a classic you were recently playing it yeah that's right um if you do got questions for the country everybody feel free to post them in chat and i'll be sure to filter them through as they come but back to you man um tell us a little bit of just you know so you, you started because you wanted to be competitive with friends. How do you view like your streams now? Yeah, so now it's just it's it's a it's a chill stream, you know. We all go into those streams where you know it's it's hype twenty four seven. That's not who I am as a person. So I'm not gonna put that in front of the camera and pretend that's who I am. I'm just gonna I'm gonna be me. My goal when I go live is if I can make one person's day just a little bit better, then I think I did a good job. But yeah, I'm just going to be there. We're going to hang out. We're going to chat. Um, they love scaring me. Like, my, my <laughs> viewers, they, they get joy out of that. I like I don't like crying, I promise. <laughs> but when we're playing those horror games, I'll, you know, just mild heart attacks. It's fun. It's fun stuff. But, you know, otherwise just chill, play. Like, every Sunday we do an afternoon. It's just, it's just laid back, play some Final Fantasy, and, and hang out. That's really awesome. So... Um, you mentioned the horror games and I'm just a person who thinks, uh, horror can be, you know, all year long. Do you, do you like attach yourself to the genre or do you just do it to kind of just, uh, you know, appease the viewers? Oh no, I, I, I love horror games. Oh good. Um, okay. It, it, they treat me poorly. I definitely, there's been times where I've almost jumped out of my chair, <laughs> just, but my favorite, my, I think a good horror game has to have both jump scares, but it also should be making you have like goosebumps the entire time. Like it should be creeping you out. And that's, that's what I go for. That's a fair question. Now the next question is what game has done that for you? So I thought Madison did a pretty good job with that. Like there was a couple of jump scares where, you know, I, I did, you know, cry. Like I, I was, I just stopped the game. I was like, okay, we'll take a quick break, <laughs> come back. <laughs> and uh, I think Visage so far has done that too. So both of those have been been A tier horror games. Oh, that's so cool! Uh, how far in on Visage are you? And uh, Chard I'm... is asking your favorite horror game. Okay, so that that's tough because I'm biased. Um, I'm gonna say the Summer of '58, and it Ooh. wasn't a great game. Like there was nothing like that sets it apart from the other games, but it was my first. So it was like one of the first horror games that I really played. And the fact that you can't die was nicely. Like, <laughs> like a little bit of protection um, made it made it a lot better. But it it was it was really solid, and I would say that was the one that made me really like horror games. Ah, oh, that's so cool. That that one actually did seem like a, a kind of newish, creepy to me. The atmosphere it put it in mm -hmm. and everything. They're coming Which... out with a new game too. Oh yeah, <laughs> tomorrow I think coming out tomorrow. Oh, so much excitement. Horror is is just one of my favorite genres of all time. Outside of gaming, do you like enjoy the films or TV series or anything horror related? I used to. I I'm not big on the TV anymore. Um, like even I have Netflix, I have Hulu. I can't tell you the last time I've watched either of them. <laughs> so I spend most of my time on Twitch, either streaming or just just hanging out with other people. Oh, okay, fantastic. You know, uh. Chard Monk is uh, attributing uh, Madison uh, to you for, for getting him into that game. You know, uh, what, do, what do you think of Chard Monk? Let, let's assess him as a streamer. I, I like his content. I, I, I like watching okay. him. Um, very, very solid. Just, I have no complaints. Okay. There's not a bad thing I can say about him. Okay. So, so on a scale of one to five, what do you give him? 4.8. 4.8. Ooh. Would watch every day. <laughs> hmm. Oh, he, he's giving himself a solid two. Don't do that. Don't do that. He says, wow. <laughs> so, um, we were talking a little bit beforehand and you said that you've, you've done little shows like this. Uh, what was your experience? What, what were these shows about? Uh, very, very similar. So it was a, it was just a discord community. It wasn't a stream team, but you know, same idea. Um, and I was, I was the interviewer. So, I was I was in your shoes. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, you get to meet a lot of different people, um, especially people that you might not get to 
to watch them stream. You know, time zones are a thing. Um, they stream while I was at work, but you know, we made this made this interview possible. So it, it was fun to be able to meet new people that way. Um, get to know them more than just what they're, you know, who they are on stream. Because, you know, obviously when you're focused on, on yourself, it's a little bit harder to, to really get to know a person. That's very true. That's kind of cool too. A really cool concept. So you just like did this all on discord just for, for fun or, or did you have like yeah. viewers there with it or? They were viewers. Yeah. So that discord has its own Twitch channel and it was very similar to this. Um, I would say not as big, but, but same, same idea. That's really cool. So, um, w what brought you to Nemesis? Like what was the appeal and you know, how do you feel now that you're on the main team and everything? Um, so I found it, a couple of people that I've known from other, other areas started to join it. So I'm like, let's, let's see what it's about. Started to look into it. Um, it's like, you know what, let's, let's throw out the, throw out a flyer. Let's, let's see what happens. Um, and I, I'm really glad that I did. I've met a lot of really good people. Um, you know, just one of the things that I do every day is I try to watch one new person every day. So oh, that's the one nice. thing I'll do is throw up the, the team page, see who's live and, and just go out there and watch somebody. Now. <laughs> I think there's only what 80 people on that team. Um, so yeah, <laughs> sometimes I end up going back somewhere you know, it's not always a new person, but that's what I try to do. That's, that's such a good way to, you know, just make those meaningful connections and friendships and stuff. And that's the main point of nemesis these days is they want to network and create a good atmosphere for everyone and make it more than just, uh, you know, just, uh, just you know another person to collab with like you actually get to know that person you become friends with that person and then that builds the bond of the team so much more because when the call to action comes for a show like this or something else people are like yeah i'm on board what what do i gotta do and that's the that's the beautiful thing about nemesis because this wasn't my first stream team i've i've tried a couple of different outfits before so this one's uh fit the best i'd like to say for sure <laughs> And, uh, I'm the same way. You know, I, I'm like even now. I'm on other ones. Um, I have nothing against anything that they do, but it, it's definitely a different, different atmosphere here, and it's something I'm definitely 100% glad that I that I gave a shot to. That's fantastic, man. I mean, it's uh, it's not easy to ask someone to take an hour out of their time away from their brand, because you know we all want to build our brand. We all want to provide content to the people that have expectations to us and things like that. So. It's just really awesome to have people like you come on and people like Chard Monk and Chat come on and just have a ball with us and uh, give us a little bit of your time. And, you know, I think I can speak on behalf of the staff and saying thank you, man, because, you know, this is always a nice opportunity. And I've been watching your streams and I just haven't had a chance to one on one with you. So this is this is a, a really cool opportunity. Yeah. One on ones are definitely, you know, it's a different, it's a different, you know, approach. Yeah. So let's. So, uh, I like. Let's do this. Let's let's do a gauntlet. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Favorite food. Go. Tacos. Favorite color. Blue. Favorite season of the year. Winter. Well, mm, I like cold weather, but I don't want. I'm gonna go fall. Cold weather, no snow or rain, or uh, no snow or ice. Mm, okay. Can you swim? No. <laughs> no. Okay. He can't swim. Do you ask everyone that or did, did I get called out here? You said the gauntlet and you agreed, you know? Okay, I, just, I just didn't. Cause, okay. So <laughs> I, I, one thing that I say on stream a lot is I can't swim. So every time that. Oh, really? Any, any game that like there's water, I'm like, this is where I would just drown. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay. I didn't know I brought <laughs> up that. Dang. <laughs> you were just calling me out here. Like, no, <laughs> See, you're, you're supposed to tell me things you don't want to talk about. We, we... Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> I just didn't know because I was like, oh, that's, that's a random question. No, no, I can't. Oh, man. Yeah, Chard. What, what, what do you want to know about uh, the country? You know, because I'm just going to keep asking him questions, which, by the way, next question. And this one's, uh, this one's pretty serious. Okay. Hot dog or burger? Burger. Easy. And it's not even close. Oh, okay. All right, now, what kind of toppings? So, it depends. It depends Ooh. what, you know, where I'm at. Depends. If I'm at home, it's just going to be like a burger. We're going to throw some buffalo sauce on there. Buffalo um, sauce. So you're not a traditional mustard or ketchup guy? I hate mustard and ketchup. Not, really? Not <laughs> the only thing worse than mustard and ketchup is ranch. <laughs> you, won't, you won't see me near ranch. 
Wow. So so uh you go to B dubs and, and you don't get the, the ranch with the hot wings? Nope. Wow. Nope, just the wings. No no ranch, no blue cheese. I'm just eating the chicken. <laughs> Wait, are you a spicy food kind of guy? I do like spicy food. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we can work with that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Chard, I, I think we, we touched this topic before, but he asked, how long have you been on Twitch? As a streamer, uh, about almost two years now. So Now, you say as a streamer, was it longer as a viewer or? I mean, kind of. I, I watched like three people. It was all pro league players. So like my account's older than two years, but for me, seriously, like getting into Twitch, probably exactly that two year mark. Okay, cool. You know, that's, that's really amazing because, uh, now that you're, you know, you've done streaming, you're really familiar with how, how you conduct yourself and everything like that. You say you go and watch someone new once a week, you know, a lot of people actually love to know the, these kinds of assessments, but like for you personally, what do you look for when you go to a stream? What makes you want to go back and watch that person? So, and th this might be where I'm a little different than most people, um, if I like you even a little bit, like two out of 10, I'm going to hit you with that follow. And then we're going to, I'm going to give you a second chance no matter what, because we all have bad days, right? Like there's some streams where we just don't have it. We're tired. Work, work sucked. So I'm going to make sure to give you that, that second chance to see maybe, maybe I just picked him on a bad day. So we'll, we'll come back. Um, but what I really look for is, I mean, first, and maybe I'm a bad person here, but I do want to see something like either a webcam or you know if they're a vtuber fine i can i can live with that but if there's nothing like I, i'm not seeing i'm not gonna be able to get a connection um like when i see your name pop up in my my who's online i want to be able to picture them or their vtuber like i need something here otherwise if i'm just looking for a game i'll, I'll go on youtube and watch so a face to the name is pretty important to you yeah it is it is okay okay um, that yeah. and really just being somewhat you know chatty you know, I don't expect you to just focus on chat. If you're playing a game, you know, you're focused on that. Especially if you're playing like a competitive one. I get it. I played League, I played Valorant. You know, you have to you have to watch the game. So, you know, but just, just some interaction. Yeah, that's always a, a super important thing for me too, is that interaction. I do get that, you know, like you mentioned, Valorant or League. Even when I used to play CSGO competitively a lot, uh between matches I would I would make sure to like face the camera apologize for like being zoned out and catch up on comments and make sure that any interactivity i lost during the match i can somehow gain some foothold again and you know when when i see that or when i don't see that it it just really defines like ah, i don't know if i can vibe with this and you know watch when you know i just want to go and talk to someone and, and see how good they are at the game and, and all that stuff so it, it's a big thing for me too is interactivity yeah i think the the biggest thing you'll see between i think it's something that really separates a good streamer from a someone who's new or or just you know not as good is if you go in their chat see how they interact with you versus one of their mods like if if they come in ask a question and you get a short answer while they're having you know a full two-hour conversation with one of their mods and you're just getting yep yep yes no it's like oh okay <laughs> i guess you just we're talking um, I, I don't know what you want for, I'll, just, I'll just leave like do you want me here <laughs> that that is a very awkward thing you know i mean i do get that mods are sometimes really close friends to us or they become right. close friends because they were active in our chat enough to become a moderator and we like the vibe but yeah showing that favoritism can kind of be a detriment to us expanding and growing because i always think that having a new viewer is a chance to grow is a chance that new to... viewer might be your next mod. Yeah. If you uh, if you get that same interaction. Yeah, it might be the the next charred monk coming into my chat. All that good stuff. <laughs> so you know, it, it's it's a huge thing, and one of the things about Nemesis is is that they actually you know try to encourage all of us as streamers to not follow a formula, but at the same time learn about some rules of etiquette and ways to conduct ourselves in ways that can benefit us and interactivity used to be a big thing they preached they still do but they used to have newsletters and different things like that that always encouraged you as a streamer if you want to grow if you want to move up on the teams which is important for anyone from community as well is that 
when you do that interactivity, you take that time out of your stream, out of your focus of your game to focus on the chat, to make those connections and answer any questions, you know, make the viewers respond to any questions you have. Those are big steps they look for in streamers that to represent the brand. And it's really important, you know, that when we say we're family, we want the viewers to feel like family when they come in as well. So it's not just, you know, in all streamers club, in our DM groups, we also expand out to our audiences. We want to be able to make sure people get that interaction. They get to know who we are and, you know, it works out well for everyone that way. Yeah. They want to be entertained, but they also want to feel welcome in your, in your stream. So yeah, 100%. Yeah, one of the draws to me, I don't know if it was for you, man, but uh, one of the big draws for me was streaming at first was just this huge, huge opportunity for me to experience entertainment in a way I couldn't. Yeah, <laughs> watching yeah. someone on the TV, I could ask them a question and they'd actually yeah. answer it back. <laughs> if they were if they were a good streamer. Yeah. Just ignoring. <laughs> they don't have their chat up. Yes, I mean, those opportunities are really, really, really golden. <clears throat> so um what do you what do you, how do you feel about consoles are you mainly a pc player these days or yeah so um since i moved i moved april of 2021 so about what 16 months ago now my ps4 is is still in the closet behind me Not, <laughs> i haven't been unpacked since. um spent all my money upgrading my pc this year um we had we had an old one before it worked it did its job you know if i wanted to stream games like like valorant would have been fine but just being able to upgrade so now i can have pretty much zero limits on what i what i can do it's it's been nice most definitely i always uh tell some of my friends that you're always a winner when you got a pc like i have no problems with consoles but once you get a pc like your ex your options for gaming are just almost infinite you know there's a game for you guaranteed on the PC somewhere. <laughs> I think the only time I've been heartbroken was uh, the next college football game. I don't think it's going to be on PC. Oh, really? I, I just don't know why. I, I don't get it. <laughs> it's the same creator as Madden. So it's like, just just do what you do for Madden with, with the other game. Because <sighs> I love those. I don't think they've had one since 2000 and like probably 14. Maybe even earlier than that. But they're so much fun. I, I remember them. owning a college football game from ea in 2008 and i don't remember seeing any expansions after it's like if it went an additional eight years i totally missed it and that might be i, <laughs> I don't even know but i but used to like the college check? games yeah yeah let's let's get a little fact check here and, and figure out uh where our college games went because i always liked the college basketball games too i know those were were few and far between I'm not here to like flex my my game knowledge here, but it was 2014. So oh snap! <laughs> I, I like college basketball games too. I think those are even sooner. Like 2011 was the last one there. <clears throat> and you don't keep up with uh, real life sports anymore, or I do. I do watch sports. Um, that's all all on the computer. Those like I don't I don't I don't count that as like watching TV because like I'll have one monitor as whatever game I'm watching. And I'll a monitor up for you know watching someone stream. Okay, that's cool. <clears throat> and Chard says this was the closest to radio broadcasting I was going to get into, which this is really really amazing as far as that goes because yeah I wanted I wanted to do radio too at one point I had uh, ideas of like man I really wish I could make a music station and make the content I want to make for it and pick the songs that I think people actually want to hear rather than like the same 10 songs on rotation throughout the day. <laughs> and uh, that never happened. So streaming has been a really nice boon for giving me opportunities to do these different kinds of content. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that because, uh, you know, growing up, we all had our dream jobs, right? Like most people wanted to be an NFL player. I, yeah. I knew my skill level. At a young age, I always wanted to be a sports announcer. Sports um, announcer, ooh! But I realized that that feels so hard to get into. It's either you know you make it big or or you're struggling. Oh like, snap! That's, I know <laughs> someone who grinds like it's like 14 hour days, 160 <laughs> days a year just for baseball season. I'm like, 
I don't think that's for me. <laughs> I don't <laughs> be real. I don't, I don't think that's what I want to do. Yeah. The sports announcer. Do, do you want to? Do you want to audition for Nemesis here? You you want to maybe give us like a a highlights of games of the week, standout moments, some uh, some upset wins and losses. I, I don't have it up. I, I would need like you know the, the TV. I would need need games flowing across so I could watch it. But do you need to go to ESPN right now and just look up like the the previous stats and you, you know maybe you can give us a little bit of a rundown of of this week's yeah, I'm events. I'm more of a live a live sports announcer. Oh, so you... I want to see the game. Oh snap! That, that that was my dream. That was you know I was like ten. Okay, I think you have permission, Chard. I need you to throw up a clip from your stream, and then we're going to have the country give us a, a live narration of that clip. So come on, everybody throw your clips in there. Come on. If you got a clip, throw it up. We're, we're going to see what this man is, is, is uh, able to do. He's going he's gonna to flex I, I, I like his muscle. Dig deep. Dig deep for the voice. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to fake it. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's so cool. Um, the way announcers, uh, especially during football, how animated they get, that's got to be tough yeah. to like do you all really the time. You really have to be in the zone for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to go to space, Hobbs? Oh, wow. Man, did you ever want to go to space? I don't like heights, so uh, <laughs> Earth, Earth is good. I'll stay on the ground. <laughs> so you're, you're not an airplane kind of guy? I have flown once. Uh, I was flying into New York City. We won a, a stock market game in high school. Um, we landed, and I was like, "All right, this was terrifying. No big deal." Uh, we get off the plane, and my my teacher, who travels all the time, was like, "That was the worst landing I've ever been on. I thought we were going to crash." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, great. <laughs> just just don't tell me that next time, and we'll be perfectly fine. I don't I don't need that in my life." <clears throat> Now you mentioned stock market game. Can can you uh, explain what that is? Uh so basically, um, it was a semester long game. Uh, you you got fifty thousand dollars. You can invest it however you wanted, and you competed with everyone across the state, and we won. Hmm. It was it was luck. I, I promise. We just we just threw it in some some funds that that grew a ton. <laughs> we picked the right. We, it was either up or down. We picked the right direction. So you've you've always been a numbers guy, is what you're telling me. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Nothing I wrong love with that. It's, it's, do I win? Not always, but it's still fun. <laughs> okay, so you're 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 the guy to ask right now. Like, what's what's the state of crypto now? Is it worth it? Yes, I mean, I would say yes. I'm I'm still buying in. Do so I how... wish it was a little bit lower so I could <laughs> buy more? Yeah, but. So like. Uh... What what would you say? G give us a give us a stock tip here. You know what what's the crypto that that everybody should uh, you know take notice of? See, I'm I believe, and this isn't you know professional financial advice. I, I'm not legally able to give that, but I believe firmly in just following you know the big the big boys, right? So my stocks, I'm doing Microsoft, I'm doing Apple. They're not going away tomorrow. Like that, they're they're fine. I'm not playing around with penny stocks. And on crypto, I'm doing the same thing. I'm sticking with Bitcoin. I'm sticking with Ethereum, and, and that's all I'm doing. Not doing the Shiba, the Doge. I'm not. <laughs> if they pop off, people make a lot of money. Good for them. I'm going to to keep it relatively safe. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't. I don't think I've really talked to anybody who's into that that kind of uh, you know, field. So so you know, educate me. What's the excitement? What's the appeal? I think so. I also like sports gambling. I, I do some sports betting. Um, nothing big money. So I think it's just that that gambling mentality. Oh. I think there's just that it gets it gets the blood pumping a little bit. There's a little bit of adrenaline rush. You see stuff going up. You if you see it going, but on the same way, if you see it going down, you start seeing your bets lose. You know, you have to be able to have that that okay. Well, some some just lose. This is this is fine. We'll get it back, and and not try to get it all back at once too is the other thing. So just I think it's just a mentality thing for me. Again, being competitive, I want to win. I want to want everything <laughs> to win. Well, that's pretty cool. So outside of like stocks and streaming, gaming, all that stuff, uh, what other hobbies do you have? I mean, that's a lot of it, right? Sports. Um, that's that's my night gaming is is you know at night. That's that's really it. All my 
I'm 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 old now, right? I'm, I'm almost thirty. I turned thirty in two months. Wow. Um, I don't I don't go out partying with the friends anymore. They're all, you know, settled down, have kids in the area. I'm <laughs> like, I just 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 hang out now. So yeah, I'd say sports is my biggest hobby. Um, but really, that's yeah, just just hanging out. We'll you know we'll have people in the backyard. We'll have fire stuff like that. But that's that's really all I do anymore. Almost thirty. Almost thirty. That makes me feel old. <laughs> Shoot! Wait till you hit thirty-two, man. All uphill that's not from even, there. That's not even that bad. <laughs> you say that now. Say that's that a now. blink of an eye away. Yeah, you, you don't want to blink and then see thirty-two right now, man. You know, you need to enjoy your youth while you got it. <laughs> I have what? I have a month and a half left. Of, a month of, and a half, really. All right, y'all, remember that. We're going to have to send out some birthday messages. Uh, just send them out right now. I, th I think you'd love to hear happy birthday right now. Can we get some happy birthdays in the chat? No, no, no. I'm, I'm still 29. Don't, don't worry about it. No happy birthdays. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you know, I, I can't stop that train from rolling, man. That's going to it's gonna take some real hard breakage there. But, you know, it's it, we're, we're here. We're going to have to commit to it, you know, and uh, definitely wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> so back to streaming um have you ever done any like charity events or or any goals to want to do that kind of stuff um i have not done charity events no um i've helped other people um so one of my good friends was doing something for the wounded warrior project um he asked me to be involved with him and i was like uh it's not really you know i haven't done it before i don't really want to but what i did was i threw up a you know a timer for him in every every hour it ran said, hey, here's the link to go donate to this charity. Um, here's who's running it. You know, here's what he's doing for it. So I, I helped him raise money for charity. He ended up raising a couple thousand, you know, so I was, I was happy to be able to help out that way. But not directly. No, I haven't. Yeah, that's, uh, that's still pretty cool. And Wounded Warrior is a fantastic uh, program to invest in and see, like, the results of that, especially for, for our dear vets that come home and, you know, kind of need the extra helping hands. So it's, yep. it's a beautiful thing to see. So what about like 12 hour streams? Have you done any of those traditional milestones as a streamer? I did. I did a, I did a 16 hour stream and I'll never do it again. <laughs> I just, I can't, I, I told you four hours. I, I'm struggling after that. So you'll, you'll never see me do like a, a 24 hour stream. <laughs> oh, wow. So why is that? Like you said 16 hours, right? Yeah. Now, were you meaning to go 24 and you hit 16 and you're like, that's it? No, I, I knew my line right away. So I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you we're doing a 24 hour stream. This is going to be a 16 hour stream. Started like eight in the morning, went till, did I mess that up? Went till midnight. I think that's right. Yeah. So I, I know what I'm about. I, I know my limits. So what kept you alive after like hour two? Like coming from somebody who who, who struggles, <laughs> I just I just kept going. I, I wouldn't. I didn't. You know, like I got up every every couple of of hours, got some more water. Um, I I just I just refused to to go lay down. If I if I would have like laid down at any point during that stream, I would have fell asleep, and you just had a sleep stream. So. <laughs> oh, that's rough. That's rough. But I I feel you. I've uh, I've been there so many times of trying to join friends on their 12 hours and stuff. And I made it maybe to hour seven or eight before I got like irrational and cranky. <laughs> oh yeah. I've had friends ask me, like, yeah, I'll show up around hour eight. How's that sound? <laughs> I'll, I'll be there for the final four. Yeah. That, that was probably what I should have done, but I was like, nah, man, I'm going to ride or die with you. And then hour seven or eight, as soon as like the game glitched out, it was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it was die. It, yeah. was, it was not right or die. It was die. Okay. Yeah, I, I was looking for an out by by that point, and like you know, the game could have been recovered. I, I was really irrational at that point. Like, yeah, I'm going to bed. <laughs> you just go flip the, flip the breakers. Of powers out. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I actually thought about just unplugging my computer, like getting out of scene of the camera, saying, "Oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom." Oh, hey, it died. Oh, yeah, yeah, powers yeah. out, guys. No, nothing I can do. <laughs> Those those are so tough to to keep going, man. Like I, 
I honestly, I honestly don't know how I functioned after. I think I slept a, a good while. I think I slept like five hours after that, and I was still miserable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so you're not even going to do like a twelve hour stream in the future? Not anymore. Nope. Did it. I, <laughs> never again. Wow. So you know, um, that's another milestone. Another milestone most streamers like going for is sponsorships and conventions and stuff. How do you feel about all that? Um, you know, it's it's not for me either, really. Um, my thing is, I want to be able to to enjoy what I stream. So if there's a sponsorship, like a game that they want me to play, I'm gonna have to play it beforehand, right? And if it's something I really enjoy, like if you know. Valorant was like, hey, let's do the sponsorship. Then, I mean, that's an easy yes for me. But if it's a game like, hey, this is brand new, do you want to do you want to do it? It's like, mm, mm, no, no <laughs> thanks. That's just, that's just not me. Like, I I want to be able to enjoy it, and if I do something, um, I want to want to be able to put my name on it and be like, yeah, this is this is actually a lot of fun. I'm not just telling you to buy it because it's part of a sponsorship. Okay, cool. What about um, what about some game companies? Are there any that you you would love to you know work with and and do something like with i don't i don't i don't think so i don't have that loyalty like you know some people are really <laughs> loyal to to a brand that's that's not who i am if if they keep producing good games you know if, if a good game comes out i'm gonna play it regardless of who it's from so it could be the world's like most hated brand and they're like by the way we have this really cool game and i like it i'm streaming it <laughs> sorry <laughs> So, so there's not like any company that you would just love to get an email from saying, "Hey, we want you to to you know be sponsored and play this game before everybody else." I mean, if so, maybe the Summer Fifty Eight company. I can't even think of their name. See, this is how bad I am with, with companies. <laughs> if they said, "Hey, do you want to do you want to play this a week early?" Then sure, you know I'm going to do it because I like that what they've done in the last three games. But it's not because it's that company. It's because I know the games they produced were were good. Okay. And I haven't, I haven't played a bad one yet, so so go them. <laughs> Do you have any anticipated games, some stuff you're just really looking forward to getting your hands on? Yeah, that one. I wish they would I think it's tomorrow. I really do think it's tomorrow. Um it's called Father's Day. Father's um, Day, okay. It's a horror game. It's a lot of fun. I, there's a couple of other horror games too that I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh The New God of War, I think that's coming out soon. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um but as you can see, I, I don't even know. I think it's Ragnarok is what it's called. Yeah, uh, so that, God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what else is out there. Because I, I had a list. There's like a list. It looks like you might have to wait until Saturday. Saturday? Okay. Yeah, it says planned release is 10-22-22. Is that for Father's Day? Mm-hmm. Or, or God of War? Father's Day. That one I, I've been looking forward, forward to that one for a while. Yeah. Um, what's that other brand? Um, I, I changed my mind. I want to go back to the last question. Okay. There's a company I, I take a sponsorship from. Um, the Quarry. Whoever made that game, they can call me tomorrow. Super massive. Yeah. If they can call me tomorrow. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll play their next game too. I think that's coming out in the fall. <laughs> Have you played any other super massive games? I've played that entire the uh, the Dark Picture series. That's all I played. Oh, nice. I haven't. I haven't really. Uh, I haven't played a Little Hope yet, and I haven't played anything after that because. I haven't had, had the other ones, but I, I kind of want to get to, uh, what was the one after that? Was that House of Ashes? Yeah, there's House of Ashes, and then, uh, Little Hope, Man of, is it Meaden? Man of Madan, whatever. Yeah, Man of Madan. Then I think there's another one coming out, The Devil and Me or something like that. Yeah, the Devil and Me is, comes out November 18th, so I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> and have you played like Until Dawn or anything else? Until, oh, until wow. Dawn's a PS only right like it's not on console or uh it's not on <laughs> i don't think yeah i think it is a playstation exclusive still so i did cry a little bit there you know like when i found that out because I, I did want to go back and play it after i was playing the other the dark picture series and then i found out that it wasn't wasn't an option and i just learned they published the little nightmares games that's cool <laughs> now I i'm really learning like things little nightmares. i didn't know that either though but those are both really good games too oh yeah yeah, until dawn looks like it is still on PS4. If it comes to PC, I would gladly replay through it. Uh, I'll play it tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. Call me up. I'll be the first person to ever play it on PC for you. <laughs> that would be beautiful. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Yeah, I haven't gotten to touch uh, the quarry. I, I, I've been wondering, like, how did David Arquette do? I think he did a good job. Really? I think, I think it was, that was a really good game. Now, I saw him in a cop uniform, and I instantly thought, Scream. Is that the same kind of persona he projected into this game? No. No? no. Okay. Okay, that's, that's promising. <laughs> I don't think he was ever a cop, though, right? In Scream, he was a cop, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about in in the quarry. In the quarry, I thought he I thought he was dressed up like a cop. His I might have been wrong. His brother's a cop. Oh, okay. In the, in the quarry, so. He anyway, he just wears a nice button up shirt that looks like a cop. He shirt. does. He does. Okay. He's like a like a, the counselor at the at the camp that they're they're the quarry. A camp counselor. I mean, he's not really a counselor because that's what the kids are. He's more like the the leader. He runs oh, the show. Wow. Wow, they really did take all the '80s horror tropes. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they really did. I, I heard it was actually uh, really, really awesome. I, I think they killed that one. They they did a, a fantastic job. <clears throat> Have you seen anything from a Bloober team? Like, uh, they're famous for the Layers of Fear games. No. No. Oh, wow. They uh they did uh the Blair Witch game that came out too. Then yes, see that's what I, that's what I mean. <laughs> uh, I did play Blair Witch. I thought it was it was fine. It wasn't you know I wouldn't replay that one, but it was it was solid. Yeah, it's one of those experiences that was just kind of a one and done. Like cool, yeah. I got through it. It was really well done, but there's not really a reason for me to go back. Right. And I think that's fine in games sometimes. I don't know how you feel about that. Like, I don't feel like I wasted my money if it was at least a good experience the first time. Yeah, I, I, I very rarely replay a game, so. Really? Yeah, actually, I can't remember the last one that I would have replayed. <laughs> so, like, other than, you know, the obvious multiplayer stuff, there's not, like, a single-player game experience you've wanted to revisit and... Oh, the closest, I mean, the closest that I've done would be the quarry. And that was because I really oops about chapter nine <laughs> and off about half the cast <laughs> on, on accident. Cause I, I thought that something happened that didn't. So I, I just didn't do what I was supposed to do. Um, so I just went back and replayed chapter nine and 10, but yeah, I mean, there, most games like in my steam library, as soon as they're, they're completed, they go to the completed section and then they sit there. <laughs> well, that's cool. So does that make you a picky buyer for games? No. Because the uncompleted list is, is terribly long. <laughs> That's probably why I don't replay them. There's just too many to get through. So you, do you stay away from open world games that have, you know, guarantee like 60 hours plus of content? Yeah. So, like, I'm doing Final Fantasy IX now. I know it's 40 hours. I'm going to do something like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is up there. Borderlands oh, I'm going to play. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so, both of those. But ones, the games I won't touch, Final Fantasy fourteen. MMOs, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near them. I'm not dedicating that amount of time to a game. <laughs> is it because you just don't like the mechanics, or is it just the commitment? I know I'll get addicted. Oh, really? I know that if I play it, I'm I'm gonna just give it all of my time, and I can't do it. <laughs> uh, so, so what you're saying is this: this has happened before for you to say it now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. League <laughs> of Legends. I, I played that one. That took ten years or twelve years of my life. Like I need to need to be careful with those. Good games. lord! <laughs> yeah, I started playing that one in twenty. I think it was twenty ten. So for someone who hasn't played it, aka me, what was the draw to you that made it just so addicting and and so fun? The grind. I mean, I was I was I was in college at the time, so I had, you know, four hours a day dedicated to class, and then. The rest was just, I, I put in like, probably, I probably, probably put in like eight hours a day of <laughs> league. So then you're trying to climb, trying to get to the next, the next ranked tier. It was fun. I do it again. No regrets. <laughs> Not anymore, but like if I could go back to, to being 20. So, so you're saying you don't want to do the eight hour grind now. You don't want to come home from work and then right into it. Oh, wow. Too old. I'm too tired <laughs> for that. What was the highest rank you achieved in League? Uh, platinum 1. So almost Diamond. It was heartbreaking. I was in my <laughs> series to Diamond. It, now, diamond. is that top percenter level? No, no. So after Diamond, there's still 
um like master grandmaster and then uh the top level wow i I, I don't know what it's called anymore there's still a lot but it's like top about top five (laughs) percent my gosh (laughs) oh wow so like so, even being in top five percent, though, there's always that grind. Like get to the next step. <laughs> so it's never good enough, is what you're telling me. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> it's the downside of of being me and being super competitive. <laughs> now that doesn't stress you out at all. Like oh, I it get... absolutely does. I love it too. So <laughs> like if there's a game where it just gets too sweaty during a match, I have to take a break from that game. Like. If it was a close call, I, I either lost or went uh, or, or won, but it's like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta take a break. That that raised my blood pressure way too much. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the next game. Let's go. Let's do it again. <laughs> wow, wow, that that's some serious punishment, my friend. <laughs> I've aged so poorly. Oh wow. So when it comes to to streaming, do you have any kind of goals you want to accomplish anything you set out for yourself not really no i I have fun with it that's that's really where it's at do i want to keep growing yeah like but do i have it like i want to be at 30 average followers by end of the year no so just keep growing keep making the connections and and see what happens you know like i do have my full-time job so it's not like i require this i don't do it for money um it's just we'll we'll see what happens would it be nice to be a full-time streamer yeah of course but We'll see. That's fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I like the guarantee of my current job. You know, I struggle <laughs> two weeks. Like, you know, I have, a, I have a rough couple weeks at work. My paycheck's still the same. If I struggle here for two weeks, we have to take, you know, a two-week vacation. The paycheck's zero. So. <laughs> okay. I, I, I get that for sure. I get that. And uh, what do you like most about your job? Because obviously most people want to pursue streaming full time once they get hooked on you know the life of it (laughs) so my job and it's very specific to my company you know my team and my company but it it does have a great work-life balance um i never feel pressure to work you know over my 40 most most weeks i don't even work 40 um so it's simple it's a lot of project management work it's fun um you know i work with i work with a lot of people that are incredibly smart in their field so being able to learn from them is fun. And then I get to come home and play video games. So I, I, I don't have much to complain mm. about. Okay. So it was worth giving up the uh, sports announcer life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would that be nice? Yes. But I would have to be at, like, you know, the top 1% of sports announcers for it to be worth it. And that, that's going to be tough. Now, why do you say that? Is there, like, a hidden hard life of sports announcers I'm just not aware of? I, I think there is. Yeah, I think there's because you know you have your main guys, right? The guys you see on ESPN, they're they're living the life, but everyone else is nonstop grinding. Yeah, it's, the guys you know, that are traveling with days. the games yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but you're having your 14 hour days. You're probably not getting paid very well. It's probably you know like forty thousand salary, which is fine if it wasn't 14 hour days while traveling. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're very much a homebody, is what you're telling me. I, yeah, yeah, I've I've definitely turned down jobs because there was a, a traveling component to it. Really? Yeah, it's just it's just not worth it to me. I like being <laughs> home. I like being able to do what I want with my time. Now, could you tell us like what kind of travel job that you've turned down? Uh, it was it was very similar to what I do. It's just more consultant based. So instead of doing everything for this one company like where I am now, it was for a consultant firm and then going to, you know, twenty different companies over the year. Wow. Now that sounds like that would have probably been some bank there, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely turn I definitely left money at the table to, to, to stay with doing what I'm doing, but I think it was worth it because I mean those jobs there's definitely more definitely more hours too. There's there's higher expectations with how many hours you work. Um so being able to to get my forty, <laughs> go home and then do whatever I want instead of living out of a motel, you know, five months a year. I I think it was a good trade off. That's fair enough. So to like everybody out there who's, you know, working full time and, and, you know, wants to get into streaming, this is your chance to like, you know, share from your experience, some words of wisdom. What would you, what would you tell them? Someone brand new. Yeah. Some, somebody that's just thinking, Hmm, I want to get a microphone and a camera and try this streaming thing. 
Well, that's the first thing I would tell them. Make sure you have a microphone and a camera. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, you won't watch them. I, I won't be there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just I just need something. I, I don't need a lot out of you. Just, just give me something. <laughs> um, what I would tell them is to you know not set unreasonable goals. If you start today and say, "Hey, I want to be partnered by by March," you're you're gonna get burnt out. You're gonna be disappointed in yourself. It's not reasonable for 99.9% of people. Um, so set reasonable expectations. Um, play games you enjoy. I know people are always saying, but look at all these games that you know have high viewers. I don't care what game you're playing. If you're having a miserable time playing it, but you're doing it for viewers, no one's going to want to watch that. No one wants to watch you just be miserable and being upset at a game because you're not having fun. Have fun, people will come. Okay, good words. Good, good words right there. Seriously, it's... Uh... It's one of the things that I get asked a lot from friends who, who want to get into it or they see what they understand is like a little bit of success from me. <laughs> and they're like, hey, how'd you get here? How'd you do this? And it's like, you know, all I can say is really it was a grind. It was just me playing what I liked, but it was it was a grind at times, you know. And like oh, if you came in on a good night, that that was pure luck. That wasn't like me every night. <laughs> That's not like... Right. I don't pull in those numbers every night. <laughs> and that's another hard part too. You have to really understand that those numbers are going to fluctuate. Oh yeah. Like, you know, I think my last stream was one of my better ones. I, I was, I hit like, I think we hit 40 without a raid. Oh, nice. And that, my next one's going to be 15 to 20, like where it normally is. And as a numbers person, that's, <laughs> I have to be able to deal with that and, <laughs> and understand that that's just how Twitch works sometimes. Wow. Yeah. So being a numbers guy, do you have any like insights into you know what to do when you're when you're over analyzing the numbers i'd lie to you and tell you just not to look at the numbers um but i do it more than anybody so i just try to avoid it try to understand twitch is going to have its highs and lows and and really just focus on always making your stream better because if you're making yourself better if you're having fun pe people will show up for you most definitely those are some good words to, to wrap ourselves up on. Um, we do generally ask the, the guests, you know, where can they find you? You can find me on my Twitch page. Boom. Is that it? No, you can find me anywhere. Discord, um, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, any of them. I always check my DMs every day. So if you want to hang out, if you do want to join my Discord, that's, that's on my Twitch page. Again, that's just, if you want to hang out with me, that, that's where I'm at. Um, I do check my, my Discord all the time at work. Like I said, it's, it's a pretty chill environment at work, so I'm always on my phone hanging out. Um, yeah, that, that's just me. I'm, I'm the country everywhere. Eventually that's, just country on Twitch. But that is the with Twitch. two E's. With two. two E's. Because wow. one was taken. <laughs> I, I kept trying. I, 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 no joke, I went through like 50 names just trying to find something. Uh, I'm going to have to look into that because the at one point, I wanted to do a rebrand, but I didn't know I could ask Twitch for the name that was taken that had, like, zero followers. Yeah, try it. It was just a, a name taken. <laughs> Worst case, I'll say no. Huh, okay. But be ready, because if, you know, they say yes, you can have it, and then you're like, I didn't do any of my rebranding yet. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a big whoopsies. <laughs> so, so be ready if you do it. Okay, good deal. Uh, do you have any games or, or projects coming up you'd love to, to you know, shout out? Uh, yeah, so we're just doing we're doing Amnesia. We'll be finishing up Cuphead. So I'm really excited for those, like the the horror games we talked about. You know, with the new the new Dark Picture series that'll be coming out probably December um, Father's Day. We're doing Amnesia. So a lot of horror games on the schedule. I think we're booked for horror games for like the end of the year. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but we do that every Saturday, every Tuesday and Sunday. Those are my my story driven games. So that's right now Final Fantasy. Hopefully finishing up this week on Sunday. Um, and then hopping into either Borderlands or Horizon Zero Dawn, but those will be you know the next next couple of months too. So really, I'm I'm booked forever. And then Thursday is my fun stream. So usually this is my this is my normal stream time. Um, it's it's my variety night. So we'll do our Dead by Daylight. We'll do our competitive shooters. You know, stuff like that. We've done Cuphead, and so that's the thing about my stream. You're probably gonna see something different every every time. That's fantastic, and that's a good little taste of what this man actually offers when he's playing these games. He's a uh... He's a sadist for Cuphead. I've seen him for the Cuphead streams. I don't, I don't know how he keeps going. I, I beat like two up, bosses up. on the first island in the, in the game originally, and I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I did one stream. It was a, it was a Thursday night, um, so I, I was ready to watch football. Um, two and a half hours, one boss did not beat him. 
It was, <laughs> it was not, that one was tough to get through. I was crying a little bit. <laughs> oh man, that is rough. But I'm super happy you've been here to jump on the podcast here, have a nice little conversation with us and yeah, you know, it'd be cool to like actually have some repeat guests. It'd be pretty cool to have you back in the future. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah. And for everybody else watching, definitely uh, check us out this, uh, this Saturday. There's, there's something a little exciting coming up there. Yeah. We're having a little bit of a nemesis community, which is branded nemesis overload. Those are going to be community based games or playthroughs of games. Like this uh, past Sunday, I did the playthrough of Scorn. That was a really interesting game to do for the channel. And then um, this Saturday, I'm, I'm super, super happy at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central Time. We will be having a session of Devour on the channel. And we do have confirmed Chard Monk for that. So that's going to be a heck of a time. It's going to be it's going to be real interesting. It's going to. It's a tough game to get through because <laughs> sometimes it's just super unfair. <laughs> so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun hearing us uh, cuss like sailors and uh, try, to, try to keep some composure, poise, dignity, self-respect, especially when uh, I, I hear Chart is doing VR. So it's going to be pretty exciting to, to see his character all floppy and wiggly while we're doing the stream. So y'all definitely want to be there for that. And... And starting tomorrow, and we'll be advertising it during uh, the Saturday stream, starting tomorrow, code NEMESIS30 will be active. That will give you 30% off all advanced products. So definitely, definitely hit that up tomorrow. Hit it up Saturday, Sunday. It's good until Monday night. So definitely get in while you can it's a good chance to try the product to grab a couple of goodies from it they have great shakers they have stickers they have all kinds of different merch and then they have some really great flavors so really something cool to check out we got it set up special just for this stream i don't know if chart is still here but we got it set up special just because he's joining us so that's really cool and then sunday at 6 p.m uh, central we will have uh, jester's court for another dungeons and dragons session monday will be Yet again, 6 p.m. Central, we'll have Beyond Nemesis, the podcast where Mayor Reynolds and Jedi Yuki talk about gaming-related topics, streamer culture, all of those things. So if you want to get in the know and keep up with the who's who and the latest news, that's the podcast for you right there. And then Thursday, we'll row right back around to another Nemesis Insider where we're going to have Pally on. And uh, that's going to be that's going to be chaos. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. Pally's, Pally's good people. And thank you again, Countryman. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on, getting to know you a little bit. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. All right. Bye-bye, y'all. Much love.